Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura. And last month, I got a really cute charm pack in the mail, and I had to stop and make a quilt out of it. Well, I still have time to get that quilt quilted, and I'm going to do it in one of my favorite quickest ways, and that is what I would call my upside down backwards quilting. So I'm going to be quilting the quilt upside down and go on the back of the fabric, which means I can mark whatever I need on that background fabric. And I do have a free pattern that I can share with you. So this is the quilt that I do want to get quilted. It is a Christmas theme, so I did want to find something Christmassy to quilt it with. And I did find two patterns that I think will pass as Christmas patterns. Both of these patterns are from Urban Elements, and these are two of their free versions. When you put the wild cherries together, it does have this fun swirl in these circles, which could sort of look like tree branches and decorations. But they also had one that sort of looks like poinsettias. So this is a row pattern. We're going to start from one side and go to the next. So it sort of has this poinsettia look. So this is the one I'm going to quilt on this. So when you go to the website, you're going to be able to print these out as PDFs. And you can print out as many pages as you want. They need to be taped together. So there's an area where you can overlap to the next. So you can cut that off or just fold it over. And you can see now where that pattern is going to match up. So you will need sets of two, and then you're going to tape these two together, tape four together, six together, as long as you need for the length of this quilt. Once I have them taped together, I do two things. I make sure that I can see all of the marks clear, and along the top, you're going to see lighter lines. Those are sort of shadow lines or placement lines where you're going to be able to place this to the next row. I do like to outline them in a magic marker in a different color. And when that's all done, you end up with this long row. I have the shadow lines and then that long pattern. I'm going to trace this on the fabric that I'm going to put on the back of the quilt before I put it on the back. So the first thing I would recommend to do is find a light colored surface that you can work on. Then take this pattern and just tape it onto that surface. Once this has been taped onto my surface, I'm going to put the quilt back on top of this paper piece. So the back fabric is pressed and ready to go. And I just did a hand press right in the center of that fabric. And I'm going to use that center line as my first line and I can see through this fabric because it is a light color. And I'm going to line up that finger press to my first pattern line. And I can see through this very clearly. So this is the right side of the fabric. So if you do have a print, be sure that the back side is down. Now I'm going to be able to trace this pattern right on top of this fabric. We will need to use some marking tool that's going to wash out, rub out, or iron out. Whatever you do, be sure to test it on your fabric first. Put some weights just to hold that fabric down. I will be marking the back of the quilt with this Crayola Children's Washable Marker. And they come in all sorts of colors. So I do want to trace out that pattern just as if I was going to be quilting it. This is an edge-to-edge -edge pattern, so I'm going to be able to mark it without stopping. By drawing those lines just as if you were quilting it, it's going to help us remember those patterns. Once we have the one row done, just slide that fabric, and you'll be able to see those placement marks that you put in a different color. Line them up, put those little weights on to hold the fabric, and draw that next line. So we're going to draw all of the lines along the back of the fabric. Now if I was not filming this, I probably would use a light color, like a soft pink or a yellow, something that you can personally see. 
that maybe is not so bright. But I do hope you can see this. And I really am truly not being very, very fussy. I do want it to look a little bit like I have free motion this, even though I have followed a pattern. So the entire back fabric of my quilt is marked. I can now put it on the back of the quilt. You will not be able to iron this onto the back of the quilt, so be sure to start with your fabric already well ironed, and we're going to have to use a spray based or a pin based. So I'm going to just lay that fabric right over top of my batting, and because I did have that center fold, I'm still going to use that fold to line up the center of the quilt because I can still see through this batting. No matter which way we stick this batting on, it's very important for us to pin the edges of the front of the quilt. We will be quilting this so we're looking at the back of the fabric. So it's very easy for us to take this front and roll it over. So we do need to put some pins so that we don't have that happen. And also we'll know where we're ending. So I've just pinned right along this edge, so I'm going to be able to see them along this side. We cannot do anything here because this is considered now the back. So if we're going to do any additional pinning, we need to pin it from the back side. Now that I have this all pinned, I'm going to be able to bring it to my machine. We can do this on a domestic machine, but today I will be working on my sit-down Bernina Q20. Just as I drew the pattern, I'm going to be quilting the pattern. The first thing, I will remove the pin from that area that I'm going to start with. I'm going to follow that design and I'm going to do the entire row until I get to the other side. When I get to the other side, I will be sure to remove that pin. I will always, always, always check and make sure that that back fabric is flat. Remove a couple of pins to get started and then stitch. Just as I did with the drawing, I'm not going to be exact. Now if you want, you can go real slow and follow the lines exactly. Now I can quilt that entire row. And I will quilt every row the same way. When you get to the end, be sure to remember to take out that pin and check that back fabric. And there's my first row of stitching. From the front, it looks beautiful. And I'm not worried about the back because that's going to wash out. And just for fun, I did use a nice bright green thread. The quilt is now all quilted, and you can see there probably isn't a line that I hit. Our curves are all different. I'd rather stitch very smoothly than really concentrate on those lines. That smoothness on the front will really show, and the back gets washed off. So those leaves are really a smooth shape. Because I did stitch right off to the edge of the quilt, I will do a row of stitching right along this edge at about an eighth of an inch. This will all be trimmed off, but that stitching is going to help the fabric stay flat and will help anchor those threads so that they don't unravel. Once this is trimmed, I can put the binding on and wash off that back. So to wash out the Crayola markers, I have found that I've rinsed this with a lot of cold water and then I've put it in a wash under the most delicate cycle 
just cold water. No soap, no fabric softener. And then just lay it out to dry. And so far, I've never had a problem with them. But always check it on a scrap of fabric for that fabric that you're using and the technique that you're using. But once it's all washed out, that back looks just as nice as the front. This was a quick and easy quilt to get done just in time for the holidays. I will put three links in the description. One on how I did make that quilt top. Another video where I do talk about marking the quilt upside down and quilting it. And one for that free pattern that looks like poinsettia. I do hope those links help you get some quilting done in time for the holidays. And thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and come on back. Let's see what we're working on next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.